Hi there, welcome to yet another session of your favorite transportation program on television. On the Lagos transportation agenda, we not only highlight current events, we also explore topical issues of the day as well as showcase current and emerging trends in the dynamic and multi-dimensional world of transportation. My name is Austin Inya. In September 2023, the Lagos Blue Line Rail Mass Transit began operations uh, commercial operations. Four months on, what has been the assessment? What has been the progress? And what more needs to be done? To discuss these and related issues, I have with me the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority in the person of Engineer Abimbola Akianjo. A regular on the show. Uh, welcome, Adam. Thank you so much. Good day, everybody. Engineer Akianjo and I will be discussing the blue line uh, mass transit, the rail mass transit system in Lagos State. Four months on, what is the progress and what do we expect coming up uh, in the days ahead on this show? Please stay with us. Great economies are built on good transportation network. This is why Lagos State Government through LAMATA has been working tirelessly to enhance the state's transport infrastructure and implement the Strategic Transport Master Plan, STMP, for Lagos and create a world-class transport network for the metropolis. The STMP would deliver six rail lines, one monorail, 14 BRT routes, 26 water transport routes, three cable car routes, and several road intervention to promote the inter of the transport modes. When all these projects are completed, there will be lower emission leading to better health for all, lower road crashes, better quality of life, and faster economic growth. With the BRT already running in some corridors, jetties being upgraded and rail line from Okokomaiko to CMS coming on board soon. Life of Logosians and the face of Lagos is changing every day. A healthier and more prosperous Lagos is in the making and La Mata is driving it. La Mata, keeping Lagos moving. Welcome back on the Lagos Transportation Agenda. Engineer Abimbola Kinajo, as I said, is the MD CEO of LAMATA, the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority. Uh, Madam, uh, as I said in my intro, it's been four months or so since uh, commercial operations began on the Blue Line Rail System. So what is your very informed assessment of progress in terms of efficiency, in terms of seamlessness and keeping to time? Okay, so thank you very much. Like you said, it's been four months. We started on the 4th of September. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that we have been uh, very timely. Uh, I believe our timetable has not been compromised in any way, shape or form. We have met all of the number of trains that we have promised the people of Lagos that we would deliver and we have met them on time. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that in the two, in the four months that we've uh, been in operations, we've only had two glitches and those glitches were dealt with very efficiently by the staff, but it did not result in reducing the number of service that we um, operated on those two days that we had that those challenges. Um, for me, I would say that the um, service has been excellent um, in terms of um, the number of service that we promised we have delivered every day. In terms of timetabling, we have met at that timetable schedule every day. So yeah, it's been good. Okay, what about passenger turnover? I mean, okay. during the commissioning and thereafter, we're told about certain numbers that will be transported on a daily basis. Are those okay. numbers being met? Or? So when you are um, operating a rail system, you will grow your um, ridership organically. Mm. And we can see an increase in the numbers of passengers on a daily basis, oh. especially in the peak periods. So yes. what we are finding is that during the peak periods, literally all the trains are full 
every time. Um, and so we now have to organically begin to grow the off-peak period, trying to encourage passengers to utilize the off-peak times. Uh, but in terms of numbers, we're still uh, on the way and we have not achieved our optimum position yet, which is good. Mm. Um, but we are, we're, we're, on the, we're on track for that. Okay, but um, of course, with every project uh, new, new to our in our parts, mm -hmm. not necessarily new in the world, but uh, with every new uh, this thing, there are always challenges. And what are the challenges you you uh, you you've been confronted with so far, and how have you been able, or are you, what are you doing to surmount them? I think one of the big challenges we had at the start was um, the way in which passengers accessed the train mm -hmm. there was a lot of rushing and, yeah. and, there, and i'm sure everybody heard that story about how people were pushing and shoving <laughs> um and people had this uh notion that they must sit down or if i'm the first person to get to the station i must sit down um, yes. but like you say it is a metro system is quite new in our in our climbs mm -hmm. um but people are getting used to it now uh, it's important that there's certain etiquette that we continue to encourage when you get to the station so you part ways and allow the passengers on the train to come up first before you get on so mm -hmm. that and those things and we i must say that um, we're quite happy with the way passengers are responding people are uh, getting used to it and they're behaving in the way that we expect them all over the world people rush so it's not a nigerian thing yes when you want to get on any train anywhere in the world everybody will rush for it because that is just a human nature it's not a nigerian problem yeah. uh, but the most important thing is that uh, first of all they must stand behind the yellow line before the train gets there all of those protocols are being observed yes. uh, people are on ground telling them constantly how to and when to and I think uh, from that perspective, we're very pleased with the way uh, the passengers have taken to the system and the way that, in which they're, they're, they're conducting themselves. Yeah. Well, to your credit, we've had um, engagements with passengers mm. over the past few days or weeks, um, and they spoke highly of the convenience and the time it saves them and all that, mm. uh, which is very good testimonial to the efficiency and timeliness that you've talked about. Uh, but what about the multiplier effects, the economic value and the general contribution of this rail system, not just the blue line, but the upcoming lines mm. to, the, you know, what are the projected economic benefits to Lagos State? Okay. So when we think about the economy of any town, any city, any country, one of the big um, boosts that it can have mm. is ease of mobility. So when people are able to go about their business easier, and quick and to time and being predictable. Mm. The ability to predict my journey is a key factor yes. when it comes to driving the economy of a city. Mm. So in that sense, I would say that we're on the right track uh, because the blue line, for instance, is timetabled. Um, I got a very heartwarming uh, testimony from one of the uh, passengers who said that in all the years he'd been living, he lived, I think, in Festac or something. He says he used to have to leave home at four in the morning mm. to get, and now he knows that if he gets to the station at 6.30, 7 o'clock, there's a train there, he takes it and he comes. Exactly. So now he is able to tell his boss, I will get to work at a certain time and know that he will meet it exactly. and he doesn't have to leave home like three hours before. So those are the things that I feel this sort of system will bring to the table. The ability for everybody to plan their journeys, the ability for us to be able to predict our journeys and ease of mobility. And that will enhance any economy and that is what will grow and develop the economy of Lagos. Have we seen those benefits already or is it something that we still we are seeing some signs of it? Okay. So when I sometimes go on this on the system and you watch people, you watch the ones usually uh, uh, the bulk of our passengers are those who have market stalls mm. in inside Leventis, uh, Tinumbu, that area, and you see them. They're able to stay, some of them are able to stay a bit later in their shops because they now know that Imagine. if I leave work or if I leave my shop at 7.30, I can still get home before nine o'clock exactly. because there's a train there. Mm. So that means that business is going on for a bit longer. A longer during the day. Uh, business is also being done with full understanding of the fact that if I get to this place at this time, I will meet them there. There was a guy who said that, oh, he, he put something up and that he was, uh, he needed to go to 
uh, in Lagos to go and get something and he was and he was thinking about oh my god how long it will it take me he remembered the train he said he was able to do that journey in less than a return trip hmm. in less than an hour and a half which Whoa that time he would never have been able to do just one leg of that journey mm. so those things are what you are starting to see and i think the passengers will be the ones to attest to it they will tell you that they've been able to do their business the market the women who are in the market mm. are able to travel back without being uncomfortable about the times they're traveling yeah all right well said it's the lagos transportation agenda during the break we were going to show you a clip on something that is extremely important not as important as transportation, but very, very key to social mobilization and, in fact, a unifying factor. I'm talking about football. As you well know, we are in the season of AFCON and uh, we are engaged in this one thing that has kept Nigerians, you know, were on the edge of their seats. The Lagos State Government, under the leadership of Governor Babaji De Songwolu, recognizes the, you know, the cohesive nature of football and its ability to mobilize society and unify our people. So that's why the government has set up viewing centers in different key locations in Lagos State. And uh, the reaction of the people, predictably, has been heartwarming and very exciting. We'll show you that after the break, when the Lagos transportation agenda returns after this time out. <music> Football is a uniting factor. Football unites the people. So Governor Sonol is doing this, uh, is um, using it as a medium of uniting the people and also using it as a, a means of uh, extending his dividend of democracy to the masses. like to appreciate Governor Saulu for bringing this opportunity to Uroshoki because um, it's not all governors that um, have the love of the youth at heart. Um, me personally, I appreciate him for doing this and he has been trying for Uroshoki since I packed to this place. He has been helping the youth here. It's very, very commendable for us to watch a program like this magnitude. We make us be very happy about the economic state of today. When we come to watch a program like this, we become a family. And we're very happy. So I commend the people that organize the program and God will continue to bless them. Due to medium that the governor have started, I really, I really appreciate it and I really feel it good that this is to encourage the youth out there so that they will stop all these uh, kind of waywards 
and some kind of taking those chances to have to do some kind of bad character and some other things. So I think this opportunity given by the governor of Lagos State is very good and is very uh, encouraging to other states that it will make sure that the youth are together. And you know sports is something that takes everybody, brings everybody together. <laughs> If you're just joining, it's the Lagos Transportation Agenda. And on the show today, we have the Managing Director, CEO of LAMATA, the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority. And we have been discussing the uh, progress and prospects, as well as the challenges of the Blue Line Lagos Rail Mass Transit. Um, Madam, um, of course, um, you are an agency of government. And what has been the synergy between your agency and other agencies uh, in the smooth running of the rail system since it began, if okay. any. All right. So, uh, for instance, when you're talking about running, one of the uh, biggest um, uh, collaborations being with the Ministry of Environment okay. uh, to ensure that, uh, um, you know, there's no encroachment on any of our alignments underneath our bridges. Uh, it's very important that we ensure that people do not carry out activities that could become hazardous underneath our infrastructure. Okay. And the Ministry of Transport, uh, Ministry of um, Environment has been very uh, helpful in ensuring that, that, uh, that they help us to clear uh, our uh, alignment and to clear the underneath of our bridges. Also the ministry, which is our parent ministry, helps us with um, ensuring that we don't have um, problems along the lines of encroachment from um, uh, the public transport system mm. and also in synergy between the work that we carry out, i.e. The, the rail system as well as the bus systems. Okay. So for instance, when we get to Marina, we're constantly looking for how to move the passengers on. Yes. So there's that synergy, there's that relationship between Lamata's buses and some of the buses that um, align with the Ministry of Transport to ensure that we disperse uh, passengers effectively and efficiently. So those two have been very key with us. And obviously the Ministry of Energy, who are the ones who have helped us in the implementation of the electricity, the electric power that we use to run the trains. Okay. They also have been quite um, um, helpful in ensuring that that power station continues to run and it runs daily. For what, about, what about the private sector? I mean, Lagos is this big hub, this giant hub. I mean, you know, you are familiar with the projection, Lagos being the fifth economy in Africa and so on. Okay. So what, what, what role do you envisage if, if that role is not being played at present, what role do you envisage for the private sector as this rail system continues to expand? Okay, it's a fantastic question because for us, um, the operations of the railway is something we want to do and hand over to the public sector, to the private sector. Okay. Uh, so Lamata had historically put out a bid and we're in discussions with private sector who will come and run the um, service. So the vision is to get a concessionaire okay. who will take over the running of the uh, service and hopefully also bring some investment into the, the blue line. So for instance, we have three sets of rolling stock at the moment. No matter what, uh, once we complete the second phase of the blue line project, which uh, the governor, uh, the government of Lagos State uh, uh, by the governor is committed to, mm. the vision is that you will, we should have nothing less than 12 to 15 sets of rolling stock. We have three at the moment. If, uh, so when we bring private sector, the vision is that having implemented 
the, inf uh, the fixed infrastructure and the systems, they will come and they will bring some more rolling stock. And at that point, will we begin to see the proper um, drive for passenger numbers when we have adequacy of rolling stock to ensure that that turnover, because the design for that system yeah. right now yeah. is we can run a train every three minutes. Okay. So if you think of that in the peak hour, the number of passengers we can move. Okay. And I, I just mentioned, just to, before I go into my next question, there's something you mentioned now, the time it takes to move from, uh, you know, between one train and, and all that. You know, we have a situation in the, a, a situation with the bus, where buses wait to fill up. Mm. Do trains wait to fill up? No, trains do not wait to fill up. <laughs> okay. So there is a position <laughs> that we say the trains will dwell on every station 90 seconds. Okay. But at the terminal stations, they will dwell for five minutes. Okay. That is sacrosanct. When the time is up, the doors shut and the trains move. Great, great. Uh, so, um, talking about expansion, talking about, we are already seeing the infrastructure, you know, getting ready for the red line. Mm -hmm. you know and all over the, the locations that have been designated the routes that have been designated so when are we likely to see the first operation of the red line okay so the the red line as you know we share track with nlc mm. um the position is that we will be we're literally done okay. in terms of infrastructure and what we're doing now is to ensure that we have integration between ourselves and nlc because they have their service to run along their track and we also have to come and run our services. Mm. So all that integration is what is going on. Oh. The vision is that by the, uh, Mr. Governor has said in February, yes. he would do the commissioning for the red line. So that would be the commissioning of the civil infrastructure, all the fixed infrastructure completed and ready for commissioning. Beyond that now, we will do the same uh, testing and commissioning. We have to do that and it's doubly important on this particular track because it will not only be our trains that will run on it. The NRC's trains, the Lagos Ibado yes. rail system will also run on it. So there will be um, a period of testing and commissioning which we will do um, and we expect that to run for between six to eight weeks. Okay. Once that is done, we will now have a phased operational uh, timetable just like we had on the blue line so yeah. we would start with maybe uh, 15 to 20 um, services in a day um, and then we will ramp that up so that is what we're working on at the moment and we're work doing that in collaboration with the NRC to ensure that that synergy exists their own timetable and our timetable will be um, synergized to ensure that their services will not be disrupted and ours will fit into their system and we will be able to run. Because they run an interstate system, yeah. they will have less trains going out around mm. in a day than mm. we do. But we must ensure that um, we collaborate well so that we can serve the people of Nigeria. Well said. We look forward to that. Thank you so much, Engineer uh, Akinjo, yes. for always having the time with your busy schedule for our program. Uh, talking to us. Thank you very much. So that's the size of our show. We've been talking to Engineer Abimbo Lakin and Joe MD of Lama Lamata uh, on the issues surrounding the Lagos Rail Mass Transit. Thank you for watching. I hope you join me this time at the station next week uh, for yet another interesting discourse in the multidimensional world of transportation. Until then, this is us today saying take care, drive safe. Bye bye. God bless.